I pay $135,000 a month to finance my cars. Now we've always been open and honest that I finance some of my cars and I've been very clear, but I've never really gone into the reasoning behind it. And there's some really good reasoning and I think that you guys can apply some of the logic behind how you live your life and what you do with things that you need to finance. Today, I'm gonna get right into how much I pay for each of the vehicles that I finance. They're gonna shock you, I'm just gonna, I mean, one of them accounts for almost 30% of that entire spend. It's, it's actually shocking. I'm also gonna go over my reasoning behind why I do it, of course, and I think there's some darn good reasons and I think it'll make sense to you once you guys hear it. I'm gonna go over how much money I have down on future cars that are coming in really soon. For example, how much money did I have to put down on the new Bugatti Chiron SS that I have on order? It's gonna shock you because you need to put a lot of money up front for cars like that. I'm actually gonna show you guys a new house that I just bought in Florida. We're going to give you a little sneak peek of that and this video for the first time ever to viewers. And then finally, as you know, our channel is all about giving back to the community. All these cars, we open them up. We let people sit in them, drive them, rev them. This is open to the public. We're all about giving back. All the money that my wife and I make from this channel goes right back to charity. So the more cars that I can get, the better it is for us all. There are several reasons that I finance my cars. Now, one of them is because you need a lot of cash for new cars that are on order. So currently I have, I don't know, six or seven cars on order and I have a lot of cash that I needed to put forward to those cars. You can't just go finance a brand new car to be built. You have to put lots of money down very early in the process, sometimes years ahead of time. Let's go over those amounts right now. First one that I have on order is the Bugatti Chiron SS. I've had that one on order for almost a year and a half and I had to put $1.75 million out of pocket down on that car. I'm expecting that one in just a few months. The second one that I have on order is the Remak Nevera and that one comes in like, a month or two. We've got a lot of really cool cars coming in just a few months, like a lot. It's gonna be crazy, crazy content coming up. The Remac Nevera, I have $1.125 million down on that car. And then we've got two Koenigseggs coming in. We have the Jamera and the Yesco. Now the Jamera is so far out that I only had to put a little bit of money down on that one, and that one was 200,000 bucks. A modest 200 grand, he says. Now the Koenigsegg Yesco, I have had on order for, gosh, it feels like two years now. And that one I had to put down a whopping $1.8 million in cold hard cash, uninterest earning cash right now. I do want to point out that that's one of the cars I am most, if not the car I am most excited to have coming to the collection. I've got the Tesla Cybertruck and the Tesla Roadster on order. The Roadster was $50,000, the Cybertruck was $100, so we'll just, we'll just call that $50,000. I also have the Pagani Utopia on order, and that one is a $360,000 deposit that I had to put down for that, and that one's going to be several years out. And then finally, the newly announced Hennessy Venom F5 Revolution. This is a over $3 million car that I have to put down a little over a million dollars on at this point to get that thing producing, and we'll have that right about a year from now. Super hyped for that car too. So overall, I have six and a half million dollars of money sitting in the bank accounts of super and hypercar manufacturers that is not earning me interest, but what it is doing is it's getting me a secured spot for some awesome vehicles that we have coming in. And of course, there's a limited pool of money, so financing does free up a little bit of money to be able to afford for me to continue to get these new cars. Check out my new Rolls Royce, just kidding. One of the biggest reasons that I actually finance my fleet is because I can utilize the money way better by investing it in other businesses and properties. So when the interest rate was sub 5%, 4.9 and lower, I was really taking advantage of a lot of that borrowed money because why go spend a million dollars or $2 million on a car when I could finance it at such a low rate and then use that one or $2 million to go invest it in other places. And that's exactly what I did. I bought a whole bunch of properties and I was yielding a lot more return on that money than the three to five or two to 5% that I was paying to finance some of my vehicles. So this is probably the biggest reason that I do it. Now, I don't want you to think that I, I finance my whole entire fleet. I mean, $135,000 a month for the entire fleet is way cheaper than it is. I actually put down a lot of money on some of my cars. I'll go over that when I go over uh, the monthly payments that I do. And I own a bunch of them outright, like the Chevy Chevelle here. But that's not an expensive car, that's not impressive. I've pretty much, since the interest rates went a little bit crazy back in like March of this year, everything has been cash since then. I'm not gonna go pay eight to 10% interest on a car because that's just too much. So some of the new cars that I've just bought, all of them cash. The Bugatti Veyron, the Aventador SV, my Mercedes G-Wagon, the Escalade V-Series, my Mercedes Sprinter van down in Florida, and a few others, all cash. Oh yeah, you wanna take the Rolls? Yeah, why not? All right, let's say This one's way more fun to drive than the Rolls anyway. Just to be candid and honest, I've now built enough wealth where I can not have to worry about having all these side investments because investments require a lot of work and they're mentally stressing and just a lot of hours of my time. So I've put in so many hours in my life to get where I'm at now, and it's time to just invest honestly in myself and my family and our enjoyment. So vacations obviously 
do nothing for money. You're not earning money on that, but they are providing an awesome experience, and that's what it's all about. Cars, in general, depreciate, and in general, aside of this crazy COVID time, they lose money, and I know that. So I'm trading a lot of these assets that made me money for assets that are gonna lose me money. And it's just that important to me because they bring me that much happiness. And when it comes to real estate, the only thing I'm really investing in at this point are homes for my, my personal self where I can go invite people, invite family to go experience and enjoy. And this is where I get to show you the brand new Florida house that we just threw under contract and that we're so pumped. I'm not a big water guy, but I think I'm gonna become a huge lake and water enthusiast uh, as we move into this house and get ourselves a boat and go enjoy some time in nice sunny Florida. Still sticking in Illinois for the time being, but maybe a permanent residency in Florida is in the future. Who knows? And now for the bread and butter, what I pay each month for each car. And I do want to remind you that I did put down a lot of money on a lot of these vehicles because that was what was required to get a reasonable rate. Sometimes if you put down very little to no money, the rate is bad. So I always kept that mindset of it's, if it's under 5%, I was going to go ahead and finance it and then utilize the money elsewhere. Here we go. Porsche 918. That's another great example of a $2 million car that I only owe about $470,000 on. Significant amount of money down. And that's only a 2.99% loan that I have on that. My wife has her daily driver, the Tesla that we got in the 2% range as well. That one just has a tiny balance of $39,000. But a month, it's only $2,396. So not too bad. My Lamborghini Urus, below 4%. 4056 75 per month. And that I owe $176,000. So about less, about half of what I paid for it. It was around $350. Now for the biggest, craziest monthly payment of the entire collection, the Ferrari La Ferrari. So I still have that in my collection, but I am gonna sell it because I just don't really, I don't really enjoy that car too much to be completely honest. It's not worth what I have to pay per month. It's not worth tying up that much capital. Um, that payment is $38,691 a month. $38,000 a month for a car. That's more than any mortgage that I have on any one of my homes. And some of my homes are in excess of the three something million dollars that that Ferrari's worth. And part of that's because you can typically get lower rates on homes and you can amortize a home over 30 years versus these cars that I have three, five or seven year loans done on. My McLaren 765LT is $6,207 a month. That I have an interest rate of 3.3% and that one I owe $310,000 on and that's about a $500,000 car. The Pagani Wyra Roadster. Now that is one that I did finance um, because I was able to get a good deal on that. That is $31,138 a month. About a $3 million car, so still shockingly high. We have another Tesla Model X in Florida that's $1,658 a month. The crazy thing is that that in itself, that's the lowest car payment, but that's actually still a significant amount of money um, for the average family to afford that. And I understand and I get that. So I don't mean to read these off like they, they sound like an, insi uh, an insignificant amount of money, but 16.58, that's a 2.5% finance rate. Um, so reasonable. The McLaren P1, which is departing extremely soon from the collection, $7,079 a month. And that one I owe 578,000. That's about a 1.6, $1.7 million car. So over a million dollars in equity on that car. I didn't want to bore you guys with all the other monthly payment amounts, but trust me when I said that I really wanted to point out the fascinating ones to you guys, the fact that they are all low interest rates. And there is a lesson to be learned here. Good moral of the story is if you need a car and you can get it financed at a reasonable amount of money, even if you could afford that entire car in cash, which I understand that not a lot of people can do that, then it makes sense to go and finance that car and whatever money that you have left that you would have spent on it, go throw that down on some investment, put it down on a house, invest in yourself or a business idea. I'll always say that that's the best investment in yourself because you can do it. Thanks so much for watching. We always appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Right, Zelda? All right. <laughs>